It has been already announced that today is Stewardship Sabbath. In fact, from last Sunday, with a group of members from Senton Church, we have gone through this topic that is announced here. Partners in his mission. We are called to be partners because there is a mission. We are called to be stewards of God because God's mission has entered into its final phase. The question that we try to answer during this week, Sunday, Wednesday, and last night was, who can be a partner with God? Last Sunday, to the question, who can be a partner with God, we came up with one answer. Partners are those who use words. Partners are also those who do not use words. Many times when we think of God's work, many times when we think of God's mission, we think that this mission belongs only to those who are skillful in teaching and preaching. But when we went through the book of Exodus, where God's primary mission is to connect His people with Him, in Exodus chapter 31, there is the story of a gentleman. He did not write a single book in the Bible. We don't have a single word of what he said, but he was a great partner. His name was Bizalo. He was the master craftsman to build the tent of meeting. You can be a partner with God. Even if your primary skill even if your primary talent is not to speak, is not to teach, is not to preach. Last Wednesday, we got another answer to the question, who can be a partner? When we read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, Jesus he entered into the third missionary trip in Galilee. But for him to proclaim the way he proclaimed, for him to impact the life of people the way he impacted the life of people, for him to expand the mission even beyond the borders of Israel, in the backstage there was a group of women and the text is telling us these women they supported the ministry of Jesus they supported the ministry of Jesus out of their own means these women they were marginalized by society these women they were considered as second-class citizens but these women they participated in God's mission. Last night, last night, we ask another question. Could, do we have to be a pastor? Do we have to be a church worker to be an effective partner with God? Through the life of Paul, the answer came clear to us. The one who covered thousands of kilometers on sea and land. 
the one who established a numerous number of churches, the one who has written the largest number of books, not only in the New Testament, but in the old Bible, he was not a church worker. He was not a denominational worker. He did not receive any salary from the church. He was not on the payroll of the church, but he was an effective partner in pushing forward God's cause. Dear brothers and sisters, you don't have to be a church worker. You don't have to be a denominational worker while you accomplish your profession where you are working you can be a missionary for God Paul he was a professional tent maker but at the same time he was a full-time missionary our workplace where we study where we work it can become our mission field this is radical partnership today as we conclude the series i want to invite you to consider another theme partners in all seasons it is quite easy to choose to be a partner but to remain a partner this is the hardest thing to do. There are some seasons of life when we are inclined to assist, we are inclined to give, we are inclined to partner. When we feel blessed, when we have received abundantly, the propensity to give is generally higher i have been blessed i feel that wings are growing with me for me to assist for me to help for me to give but you will agree with me dear brothers and sisters when the challenges and obligations of life are many when money is tight we might hesitate we might hesitate to assist we might hesitate to partner we might hesitate to give to God and to others but this morning I want to remind us about God's ideal for the believers when we read the book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 26 second part listen to what is written there the text is saying but the righteous gives and does not spare the righteous give and does not spare this text is setting regular giving this text is setting regular and constant partnership as the ideal for the believers. We are called to give in all seasons. We are called to partner in all seasons of our life. And the question this morning, are we are we partners in all seasons? Are we givers in all seasons? Friends, when we go back to the Bible, there is a group of believers that have adopted this ideal of being a partner in all seasons. I'm talking about the Macedonians before we revisit the example set by the Macedonians let us pray first Lord 
teach me by your Holy Spirit. Lord, teach us by your Holy Spirit. Inspire us by your word. We are praying in Jesus' name. Amen. For us to appreciate the work of the Macedonians, we have to go back to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 27, 28, tells us that there was a need for partnership. We read in this passage, And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. This text is talking about a famine. This text is talking about a need, and this need is all over the Roman Empire. But what is interesting is the, the way the church responded to that need. Needs are everywhere. Needs are of all natures. But how do we as a church respond to the needs around them, around us? We read in the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 29, Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. Are you hearing what this text is saying? There was a need. There was a famine across the Roman Empire and the church is reacting to that need. The church is doing something. I want you to think of the church, of the early church, not as a big church. It was still a very small church. It was not yet an influential church, but still with the limited resources that the church had in those days, the church decided to assist. The church decided to bring relief to the people and the text is saying they will concentrate their relief to the people dwelling in Judea. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 wrote these words. Now about the collection for the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. Alongside with his ministry, alongside with his preaching ministry, the text is telling us that Paul was organizing a collection for the people of God in Jerusalem. Dear friends, I want us to appreciate what this early church was doing. Thank you so much. I want us to appreciate what this early church was doing. Apostle Paul, he defined himself as the apostle of the Gentiles. He defined himself as the apostle of the pagans' world. But however, Paul is inviting the whole church to support the believers who dwell in Jerusalem. To support the believers who were of Jewish origin. What does that mean? This is an example of Christian solidarity. The early church, 
the early church was united not only in the word but also in caring for each other beyond cultural and national boundaries we have something to learn from the early believers we have something to love to learn from Paul solidarity beyond cultural and national boundaries the practice today we support we give generously to those who are near we support we give generously to those who are like us whom we can see and we give to those we give to uh, things that can benefit us in return but when paul when he was inviting believers all over the roman empire to support the church in jerusalem to support the believers in jerusalem paul was promoting generosity without selfish motivation how do we partner today do we partner because we have something to get back do we uh, support because we will benefit from what we are doing or giving paul the apostle of the gentiles he decided to support the church of jewish origin Brothers and sisters, when we look at these texts, about this general collection, we can learn something else about why they were doing this collection. The first idea that we got from this text, the purpose was for relief. But I'm sure you have observed something. The famine was was all over the world all over the known world all over the roman empire but paul and the believers they were intentional in supporting who the jewish church the church in judea the church in jerusalem and we may ask the question what could be the reason why are they choosing to support the church in Jerusalem while the famine was all over the world? It has to do with the special role played by the church of Jerusalem. The church of Jerusalem in those days was not just one church among the others. The church of Jerusalem was the center of Christianity in those days. It was the missionary center of Christianity. It was the administrative center of the nascent church. When the people were supporting the church in Jerusalem, it was not just for relief, but to ensure that the church of Jerusalem could pursue its God's given assignment. Brothers and sisters, while we manage God's resources, we have a double obligations. We need to help. We need to assist the needy. We need to participate in relief activities. But this should not be the end we have a responsibility to support the church in advancing the preaching of the gospel after feeding the poor after attending to the needs of people around us we have not completed our partnership our partnership as a church our partnership in god's mission should not end after we have fed everyone in the community 
Our partnership should go beyond that. Assisting in proclaiming God's work. Supporting God, the proclamation of God's work. Brothers and sisters, I will now invite you to look at the reaction of the believers in the church of Corinth. When Paul appealed to them for the first time, listen what was their reaction. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10, second part. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Here Paul is commanding the people in Corinth. But Paul is speaking about something in the past. Paul is saying, I can still remember the way you supported. I can still remember the way you participated. You did not only give, but your willingness to give was something out of this world. But when we continue to read this passage, Paul is going to share some concern. After talking about last year, now Paul is talking about this year. What is happening this year? Let us read in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 3 to 5. Yet, speaking of now, of this year, Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. Let us now move to verse 5. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exalt the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not of grudging obligation. Can you see that there is something different? There is something different happening in the church of Corinth. Last year, they were so zealous to give Last year, it was, oh, they really wanted to participate. But through the words of Paul, we can, we can see that now there is some hesitancy. The passage of time has eroded the zeal of the Corinthians to participate. The passage of time has reduced their willingness to partner with God. Dear brothers and sisters, we too, we suffer the same problem as the people in the church of Corinth. When we first heard about the gospel, when we first heard about a need in the church, in general, we are so enthused to help. We are so passionate to bring our contribution. But with the passage of time, after several months, we are still hearing the same appeal. How do we react? Are we partners in all seasons? Or are we partners only or were we partners only in the former seasons of our life the problem of the church of Corinth they they were hesitating to pursue the partnership brothers and sisters there are factors there are several factors that can affect our disposition to partner with God. Just allow me to mention three, four of them. The first one 
when we are going through trials and life challenges. When we have our own problems and difficulties, the natural tendency is to concentrate on ourselves. We don't have time for others. We don't have means for others. We, we look at ourselves and we say, I am already miserable myself. How can I partner? How can I give? How can I support? Trials and life challenges can remove this inclination from us to partner with God and to partner with others. The second big problem is interpersonal conflicts. I am not comfortable with these people. I am no more comfortable with this church, with these people around me. How can I continue to support? Relationships, when relationships have been bruised for some reason, sometimes for good or for bad reasons, when our relationship has been bruised, the tendency to withdraw from partnership is very high. Especially when you are trying to support people and you feel that these people, they do not love you. Or the people with whom you used to, part, uh, to team up in mission, these people, oh, there is something between us. The, the chemistry is not working anymore. The result, the result is we withdraw from our partnership. And sometimes, when God seems to be distant, when God seems not to be answering your prayers, when God seems not to be intervening in your life, in our mind, we think like that. God is not fulfilling His part of the contract. Why should I partner with Him? Why should I partner in His mission? But you and I, we do know that God is always faithful. It is only a matter of perception. It is only how we see things. But perceptions of what God is doing or what God is not doing can really affect our partnership. Or simply a variation in our personal mood. We wake up one day. I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel it anymore. There is no reasons. You cannot explain why, but you simply do not feel it anymore. I don't know what has happened to the church in Corinth. I don't know why they, they are now reluctant to participate. Why they are now reluctant. They are not is. They are now hesitating to partner, but something has happened. What about me? What about you? What can you say about your partnership with God? Has it remained the same over the years? Has it grown or has it shrank with the passage of time? Brothers and sisters, as a mean of encouraging the church in Corinth, Paul will tell them about the Macedonians. Paul will tell them about the Macedonians, how these believers, they were partners in all seasons. Let us go to the text of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2. Speaking about the Macedonians, that in a great trial of affliction, that was what the Macedonians were going through. The abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Can you see the two contrast in this text? There are two oppositions in this text. I have tried to figure it out through this table. 
On the left side, great trial of affliction. The, the Macedonian church was persecuted. The Macedonian church was suffering from harassment from its environment. But the text is saying, though this church was going through great trial of affliction, they had an abundance of joy. But there is something else. They were going through what Apostle Paul is talking about. He is talking about they were going through deep poverty. The exact translation for this expression, deep poverty, is down to the death poverty. This is really, really, really poor. But the text is saying, though they were going through deep poverty, how was they giving? How was they partnering? Riches of their liberality. You cannot change some life situations. You have no control on many life circumstances. That was the problem for the Macedonians. They had no control about the persecutions that were coming over them. They had no control about their deep poverty. But they had a choice. They had a choice. And the choice that they had was to continue to partner with God. To continue to partner with God. This is partners in all seasons of life. Dear friends, there is not only a relationship between this side and this side, this side and this side, but I do believe that there is also a relationship between riches of their liberality and abundance of their joy. There is. There is a direct correlation between you being a partner with God, you being a donor, you being a giver, and the joy that you are actually experiencing. You know this text very well. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There is another word that captures the idea of blessed. It is more happy. It is more joyful to give than to receive. Do you know that scientists have proven that today? There are five scientists of the University of Zurich. They have studied the MRI, the brain MRI of people. We do have a zone in our brain that produces joy, happiness, and joy, happiness, and pleasure. And they observe something. When you are planning to give, this zone of your brain is activated. And those who are not planning to give, those who are not planning to, to partner for some good causes, this area of the brain is not activated the same way. There is more joy. There is more happiness to give. Brothers and sisters, why? Why did the Macedonians gave the way they gave. Though they were going through deep poverty, though they were experiencing trials and persecution, the answer was mentioned even this morning when we were going through the garden of prayer. Let us read this text from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, and see what this text is is saying okay we read this text from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 the text is saying moreover brethren 
we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Are you hearing what Paul is saying? Before talking about the Macedonians, before talking about the way they gave to the Lord, the way they partners with the Lord, Apostle Paul is saying, these people, they receive the grace of God. They receive the grace of God. What is the grace of God? We received a very good definition of the grace of God this morning. But just allow me to tell you this. Grace, the word grace is simply gift. They have received gifts from God. That's why they gave the way they gave. That's why they partnered the way they partnered. Brothers and sisters, what have they received? What have they received? Have they received some material goodies? No, they were really poor. What have they received as gifts from God? They have received salvation from God. They have received forgiveness from God. They have received hope from God. But above all, I do believe that they have received the grace of giving. They have received the grace of giving. You cannot give. I cannot give without the grace of giving our natural inclination is to be selfish our natural tendency is to try to bring everything to us the macedonians they gave the way they gave because of the power of god's grace the good news this morning but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Not only the Macedonians. Not only the Macedonians could be partners in all seasons. You and I, we can too become partners in all seasons. Even when life is tough and rough for us because of the grace of God. The Macedonians, they were not superhero partners. No, they needed the grace of God. And this was an encouragement for the believers in Corinth. Paul, he was saying to the believers in Corinth, I do understand. I do understand that after one year of partnership with God, now you are finding it hard. Maybe you have some good reasons to withdraw from partnering. But I want to tell you one thing. Your motivation can increase. Your motivation to partner with God can increase. Even what you are going through actually because, because of the grace of God. The grace of God is what I need. The grace of God is what you need to remain a partner in all seasons of life. Brothers and sisters, before we conclude and end this message, I would like just to share with you briefly about the Macedonian model of partnership. They did not only partner in all seasons, but listen to what Paul is saying about the partnership of the Macedonians. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift 
and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. When I read this, these two verses, we can pick four qualities about the partnership of the Macedonians. They were not only partners in all seasons, but the text is saying they were partnering according to their ability. What does that mean? To partner with God according to their ability. The Macedonians, they were not comparing themselves with others. They were not interested to know how others are giving, how others are supporting, how others are partnering. Because when we start looking at what others are doing very rapidly, if we consider that others are already doing or giving much, we might conclude that it is not important for me to give. It is not important for me to do because someone else is already doing and giving. When we, when others are seen as giving a small amount, when others are seen as doing very little, we might conclude that we are giving, that we are already giving too much. That was not the way the Macedonians were performing. They were giving. They were performing according to their ability. Friends, when we continue to read, there is something else about the Macedonians. They were even partnering beyond their ability. How can you give beyond your ability? How can you do beyond your ability? What does that mean? They were not giving out of their surplus. They were not partnering from their extra time. No, they gave sacrificially, not comfortably. Allow me to share with you this beautiful challenge from Sister White. And the absence of self-denial, okay? In his professed followers, God regards as a denial of the Christian name, those who profess to be one with Christ and indulge their selfish desires for rich and expensive clothing, furniture, and food are Christians only in name. To be a Christian is to be Christ like. This is to partner beyond our ability. I'm sure if Sister White had to write the same in our generation, she would have added other things to expensive clothing, furniture, and food on which we are indulging ourselves. Are we supporting God's cause beyond our ability? Givers, partners in all seasons. But which type of partnership? Which type of partnership? Is it a partnership beyond our ability? And the text talk also about they freely gave. They freely gave. Giving is the result of a choice. Giving is a result of a decision. It is neither out of compulsion nor based on emotion. Free will offerings consist of giving according to the prompting of a revived heart, a proportion of what we have received from God. It is not felt as a pressure. And finally, Paul will tell us something about the Macedonians. They appeal to participate. They told Paul, please do not leave us aside. Do not look at our poverty, Paul. 
Do not look at the persecution and trials we are going through. We don't want to be uh, put aside. We want to partner. Friends, how do we react when we hear another appeal from Sister Sandy? How do we react when we hear another appeal from those who are raising funds for the church building? Deep in ourselves, what do we say? Oh, another appeal? Another appeal? When are they going to stop this thing? But the Macedonians, each time there was an appeal for them, it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity to partner with God. It was an opportunity to participate in God's mission. That's why the appeal to participate. In conclusion, very brief, I will just say, be a partner in all seasons. Do not be a partner who has to look back in the past to tell about your partnership. Some people are like that. They can tell you stories about their partnership. But these stories, you have to remove dust from these stories because they are really, really back in the past. May our partnership be current. May our partnership be actual whatever be our life circumstances. And finally, the grace of God. The grace of God is enough. Contemplate, meditate on the grace of God at Calvary. Contemplate and meditate on the grace of God that you are experiencing daily. And you will be, you and I, will be transformed into partners in all seasons of life. May God bless you. May God bless us. May we be known as partners in all seasons. Amen. You gotta give, 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 give to the Lord. All the things is given to you. Given to you. All you gotta give, 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 give to the Lord. Reflecting all the love of God. Oh, you gotta give. To the Lord, oh, 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 the things is given to you, given yeah, yeah, yeah. To you. All you gotta give, 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 give to the Lord, reflecting all the love of God. Oh, 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 oh. God so loved the world that He gave, He gave, He gave His only Son, yeah. Wanted to save a man so badly. Yeah. He went and took his very best gift door in his only son so you could have eternal life. Oh, 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 oh. Give, 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 give to the Lord. Oh, 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 the things he's given to you. Given to you. Reflecting all the love of God. Oh, 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 this is how we know love that He laid down His life. So we ought to lay down our lives for brothers and sisters. How can the love of God be inside of you when you see your brother in need and say nothing to give? Oh, the Lord, Lord. Oh, all the things is given to you, given yeah, yeah, to yeah, all you. Oh, you gotta give, 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 give to the Lord, in honor of his righteousness, righteousness. to 
Now give to the poor church, give, give, to, the give Lord. to the Lord, Don't whatever you can, whatever you, whatever have, you have, whatever you give can. to the Lord, give to the, Lord. Give to the poor, give to the Lord, give to the Lord, Santa, give to the Lord today, give to the Lord, give to the Lord. Don't hesitate. whatever you give, whatever you have, him whatever you can, whatever it is, give to the Lord. he'll give it back give to the Lord, give to the Lord. Hey. Running over, running over, running over, running over, oh, 